Hey guys, how is everyone today? Um, I've worked in tech long enough um, that I'm gonna have my notes here, just in case. I'm not as good of an improviser as Damien was. Uh, so we're gonna talk today about building product at media companies. Um, so hi, I'm Rachel. Uh, I have 10 years experience taking products from concept to market uh, in startups, agencies, and major media companies, um, including Dave, uh, a FinTech personal finance app that helps people manage their finances. So I'm here today to talk specifically about big challenges um, and opportunities within product innovation within these entertainment companies. Um, so it's a really interesting time, obviously, for, for entertainment and media right now. Uh, we're standing at a major inflection point of how media gets distributed. So being a product manager at an entertainment company is a really exciting time across film, TV, media, or publishing. Quick show of hands, uh, how many people have already checked out Disney Plus that launched this morning? Okay, quite a few. Uh, there's people on Twitter who are faking sick uh, from work today to kind of relive their childhood memories. Um, so we're kind of at a cross section in distribution models. Um, we've got the old way, and then I don't need to tell you guys, the new way is the internet. Um, so we've got fast internet, it's changing our connection to each other, it's changing how we consume media, how we share it, um, and it's really become a major player, obviously, in the last 10 years. So in this transition, we have new media and a simpler distribution model. Uh, in the past, media companies used to distribute um, through all of these channels, and they each had their own technologies associated with them. And now, we have a very streamlined offline uh, a representation of what that looks like. So now, you can take any stream URL and any internet connection, and then users can consume your media across any device, which is pretty exciting. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's far more complexity that we'll talk about later. Uh, so let's take a step back for a second and remember how we got here. Um, so the 20th century saw the rise of radio, film, and TV. Film was invented over 100 years ago. Uh, we had our first talkie in 1927, where conversation was heard in film for the first time. Movie theaters evolved from there very quickly. Um, animation started happening. And editing techniques happened, and then we moved into television. In the 1950s, television, cable, and color TV came around, although these technologies weren't fully adapted until 1970s. And if you look at the 21st century, we're only 20 years into this century, and we already have so much at our disposal as product managers to use. So we've got you know, video on demand, uh, we've got user-generated content, personalization we'll talk a little bit more later, uh, bookmarking, uh, metadata, and, and user kind of facing stuff. So all of these big breakthroughs, though, of the 20th century, uh, kind of laid our, our media landscape and what we know in today as kind of the big players. So I'll reference them as old media, um, but you guys know Sony, Disney, Fox, Paramount, Viacom, um, kind of these institutions uh, that have been around LA for, you know, 100 years. Um, so yeah, we can't really talk about media and entertainment and working in media and entertainment as a product person without talking about Los Angeles. So Los Angeles is a city of storytelling, right? Uh, our history as a city and the culture is deeply rooted in telling the experiences of the human condition and following characters and arcs. There are even stories about how these stories are made. So probably everyone in this room knows about the Swingers Diner, the Roosevelt Hotel, uh, Chateau, uh, the Viper Room, like all of these places have unique stories. Uh, and Tarantino found this so interesting, he made a movie about the process of story making in LA called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And so too, our products have to tell a story. Uh, I think LA tech is different than other tech in other cities because as product managers, we're not just trying to create the most frictionless, seamless experience for our users. We're not trying to order them a car to get them from point A to B. We're not trying to get them as groceries as fast as possible. 
we're actually trying to tell the story of the creators and the artists that create this content. So I think that that's something to keep in mind as a product manager at entertainment companies, that you're in the business of connecting and having users engage and experience the content, not just try to get through the checkout process as soon as possible. So we got old Hollywood there. And then one of the things, uh, I use Sony because they're iconic, I think, with the, the rainbow and the lot, but one of the best things about working in a media company is the people. So driving through the gates of any lot, there's just this magical thing. Uh, a lot of them feel like college campuses, uh, but the thing that makes them so cool is the people. So product companies, I love you guys, I've worked in product companies, uh, but everyone in a product company is mostly gonna be geared towards tech. So you've got developers, you've got product people, you've got maybe data scientists, uh, and at media companies, you're gonna get an eclectic all kinds of personalities. You're gonna work with creators, so you're gonna work with creative folks, and then your office manager might be a stand-up comedian at night. Or uh, you know, your accountant might be a, an aspiring screenwriter. Um, so the thing that I love about working in media is the personalities. They get really excited about Halloween parties, uh, any, any kind of thing where they can dress up. Uh, and it's really cool to work uh, across kind of different people and different perspectives. Um, the downside of that is as a product manager at an entertainment company, uh, you have to do your job and you also have to keep up on every single episode of every single show that you might not want spoiled. Because uh, if you come to work on Monday and the Game of Thrones episode aired on Sunday, everyone is gonna be talking about it very passionately and you're gonna, the, it's gonna be ruined. So you have to make time to actually watch the content you're working on. So let's get into the product process at these companies. So the slide before, I had a very nice streamline, oh, this is easy uh, kind of thing. Uh, well, it's, it's not for product folks. Uh, as you can imagine, there's a whole lot of steps from a modern OTT stack that you have to go through. So you're looking at starting with the video, then there's all that stuff in between we won't go through right now. Uh, and the end output is what the consumer is. So where they're, where they're at. So whether they're watching on their smart TVs or uh, their devices, that's kind of what the end goal is. Uh, so more to that. Um, the industry has done a good job of kind of catching up and, and meeting users where they're at. I think as product people uh, in these organizations, you really have to be pushing forward and you have to be both helping executives at these studios understand that users are watching more on mobile, they're watching on their smart TVs, they're not watching on traditional TV anymore, and then building products to, to mirror those experiences. So 10 years ago, when I started working in product, um, for instance, I had to worry about IE8 a lot. I had a boss who loved IE8. Uh, our users were not using IE8, and it was going to be phased out in about eight months. Um, but you still, as a product manager, have to be pushing forward, but also understand that not everyone uh, in your top executives are going to be from tech the tech world, so you need to kind of meet them at their level. So being able to push forward and then also address bugs on IE8, even though you know that's going away, um, is something that you know can be challenging. Um, I think that executives have, have caught on to like smart TVs, um, and in the last few years, they definitely understand that users are watching content different ways. Um, I did have to build a jumbo-sized version of our website on an Apple TV that was like 73 inches, uh, just for one person. Uh, but again, <laughs> you're, you're kind of both shepherding things forward and also meeting the executives where they're at right now. Okay, so you're also, if you work in video streaming, working on live. Uh, and live is very exciting, um, you know, whether it's sports or news, um, but as a product manager there, you're gonna have to work nights and weekends, and you're gonna have to be on call. 
Um, an example of this, I worked at Fox uh, during the 2017 World Series. The Dodgers were in it, very exciting. I'm a Dodgers fan, so I knew I needed to get a stream to five million people on the web, but I also wanted to go watch with my friends. So I took my computer to the bar, I plugged it in, uh, and I was triaging as the Dodgers were playing, um, and they lost. Uh, and my friend, very serious Dodgers fan his whole life, looked at me and said, they lost because you had bad luck, because you were looking on your computer. And I was like, we're still friends. It's okay, he got over it. Uh, but you know, it's like, sorry, but everyone wants to watch the stream and I have to, I have to triage. Uh, the good news about that is that after the RCA, the, the day after, as a product manager at entertainment companies, tech companies, executives understand tech debt and kind of, understand that we need to be addressing that as we go. At entertainment companies, after something goes wrong like this, uh, then you get to kind of prioritize your tech debt in a sprint. Uh, so finally you have executive buy-in and that's very exciting. <laughs> okay, so one thing to keep in mind if you're working in product and entertainment, you've got a lot of different things that you're juggling and stakeholders. So we've got actual stakeholders and often those are competing studios or uh, a lot of what happens in entertainment is there's duplicate departments or two departments that are both concerned about the quality of the live stream, for instance. So then you end up having two different bosses with two different you know, ideas. Uh, and so being a product manager to kind of get all those together. Um, and then you also have internal tools for the creative and content teams, so streamlining their their process and in making improvements uh, for, for them is really important. Uh, video becomes its own kind of stakeholder, even though it's not a person, obviously. Uh, video is something that is always on your mind as a product person. You could be working on the front end of a website, but you're still beholden to that video quality and making sure that those users are getting a good stream. So video becomes kind of this force uh, that everyone works with. And then at media companies, uh, sometimes, <laughs> maybe like once a week, you get to be a consumer and experience product manager. Uh, and you get to think about privacy, settings, bookmarking, personalization, um, and so that's, that's really fun. Okay, so old media opportunities. Let's talk about kind of what product managers can help push the industry as we know it forward. So being the best storytellers, obviously as product managers, you're writing stories, you're writing tickets, you're not the storyteller, but it's your job to honor the creators and the storytellers who are making this content. So sending high value content to SVOD, uh, keep investing in bold visionary pro productions and resisting over personalization. As product managers, we're optimizing to complete op personalization paths, and that's important, but only to a point, right? As product managers, we have to partner with our content teams uh, who are best in class at, at studios and get our users outside of their comfort zone. So we need to be adding into our data considerations that if a user tells you that they like PB&J and you give them PB&J every single day, that's a stale experience, and they're not really growing. So adding, we're not serving the user in those moments, we're just giving them what they think they want. And that's not honoring the creators and the PAs who grab the coffee and all of the storytellers. So as product people, we need to think about pushing people's envelopes and going a little outside of the box so that we can deliver exciting and engaging content. Uh, and this is a consideration that Uber or Amazon Prime Groceries you know, doesn't have and they don't need to worry about because they're not in the business of, of art and of storytelling. So I think another opportunity and what I got to do at Fox uh, because I was a part of a technology group that was really cool within Fox uh, was getting studios to think more about their product and users instead of, so shifting the mindset from viewing users as audiences to seeing them as users. Um, so we do that by having product uh, analytics instead of kind of dated Nielsen and Com, Comscore 
ratings. Um, implementing those kind of things into products takes a lot of time and also a lot of maintenance. And we're just getting kind of a shallow view. So quitting thinking uh, and kind of outdated demographic boxes and then building clear and delightful experiences. So traditionally, I think the old media way is thinking about ads. Um, every start is a pre-roll and we're kind of obsessed with getting viewers to watch more ads. And I think as a product manager at these companies, you have to understand that that's a, a lazy metric and it's not a consumer value metric uh, that improves products. So I think studios can learn from technical companies about thinking about users as users and creating LTV across time as the technology product companies do. Uh, I think that old media is ripe to kind of revolutionize the production tools and kind of the workflows that create our content. So hiring product managers who can help streamline uh, workflows with, with cloud tools. A lot of the executives that you're gonna work with started as PAs, they started as assistants. They know what that life is like and so they are able to deliver value and products to those people. Um, so aligning production with the ex user experience, exploring user-generated content, and keeping hiring the best in class content teams to partner with product. So at product companies, you can build a good product without a very good content team or no content team. Uber doesn't need a content team. At media companies, you could be the best product manager in the world, you could build an amazing front end, but if you don't have a partner in the content team, it's not gonna work. Your product's not gonna be very good. So I think there's a couple of old media like challenges that, that product managers can really help out. First off, there's this business uncertainty, right? Every, everyone is grabbing up, it's kind of a land grab, they call it streaming wars. Uh, and I think that there's a business uncertainty about which direction to go. All the streaming apps look the same. So I think that product managers within these entertainment companies really have a chance to innovate and push uh, entertainment and media companies in a direction that they're gonna be able to hold that industry that they've had for 70 years. Um, culture of tech. So when I got into media eight years ago, nine years ago, uh, no one was really doing agile. There wasn't really software development practices. Um, at my first gig, everyone was using Word document and my boss would print out the website and then circle <laughs> um, what he wanted changed and highlight it and then I couldn't read his writing and so I'd have to go back to him and ask what it was anyway. Uh, so as a product manager, again, pushing forward uh, and really kind of establishing those best practices while also being able to meet people where they are. I think in the last you know, five years, a lot of entertainment companies have, have hired product folks and tech folks, um, but you're still gonna have to be someone who champions efficient process and kind of brings in those product tech uh, strategies into entertainment. And then conflicting strategies. So sometimes at a, at a product tech company, you ask five executives what the goal is, um, say at a FinTech startup, there's gonna be one overall goal. Everyone understands what they're working for and the roadmap is kind of set. At a media company, as a product manager, you need to be day-to-day -day tactical, but you also have to be able to define some strategy and you have to help, again, work with your boss and the executives to define those roadmaps and help figure out what exactly the strategy is and where we're going. Studios aren't monolithic. So if you ask five different executives at, at media companies what their digital strategy is, then you're gonna get seven different answers. So being able to come in as a product person and kind of define what that roadmap looks like is really important. So let's talk about new tech. New tech is gonna be like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, all that. Throughout the 20th century, film and television facilitated a lot of shared experiences. So linear, linear, linear television always rewarded content that appealed to a broad audience because we wanted to have everyone tune into a singular channel and a singular show at the same time. Uh, and it created these living room experiences, watching TV with your family uh, around you know, Lassie. 
Over the last 10 years, I think a key difference in what I've seen in media companies is this drive towards personalization. Uh, and it's a shift in the product strategy. Now we're watching more alone. So in 2017, um, which is probably more now, because it's two years later, but there were seven screens in every household on average. So everyone's watching content more alone. Uh, and I think that the media companies and the tech companies have caught wind of these personalization and recommendation algorithms, and they've started implementing those uh, and targeting specific content to one person now instead of the family room. So one of the big challenges for new tech is learning to think like storytellers and studios. So I think that's a challenge for Netflix and Amazon, for instance. Uh, as product managers, we write stories all day in Jira, uh, but to actually write dramatic stories, you've got to think a lot differently. So for example, if you're building an e-commerce website, uh, you want to eliminate every possible obstacle in the user's way and make it very fast and seamless. For storytelling, on the other hand, it's more engaging to make the checkout experience a struggle. So as new tech companies uh, become studios, they have these non-tech problems to choose fresh and interesting content to green light and produce, and it's one of the hardest things to do. And studios are really great at it. Studios have had over 100 years sometimes of this magic sauce of choosing what films or what, what's gonna be iconic in a year. Uh, we can think of like The Office, The Sopranos, um, Friends, like whatever show, you can think of all the FX shows uh, have like a brand and are pretty iconic. And I think that new tech, uh, I'm not sure that they can learn that. Um, but there's a quote from William Goldman. Uh, not, nobody knows anything. Not one person in the entire motion picture field knows for a certain what's going to work. Every time out, it goes, and if they're lucky, it's an educated one. So I think everyone has kind of educated guesses, and the studios are really good at those educated guessings because they've been doing it for 70 years. So what are new tech opportunities? So thinking about globalized, localized subscriber bases. So the Netflixes, the Disney Pluses, they can launch content across cultures, across languages, across the world very quickly. Um, Netflix is obviously a worldwide brand, uh, and so working as a product manager and thinking about a globalized set uh, is something that you think of. And they have a deep understanding of users. So they're using product metrics to learn more about their users. They're not seeing users as viewers, they're not seeing as users as audiences, they're not using kind of outdated analytics to be able to get that or demographic information. They're using product data and an analytics. Uh, Netflix uses valuable minutes, um, which keeps track of all the minutes that the user is retained. Uh, and they've done a lot with that to do discovery and engagement kind of things. Um, and so I think that they've done a really good job of kind of making those product analytics a part of their story. Um, good streams, like these places have new technology, they've got developers who are hungry for new technology, um, their streams are going to be good quality, they're going to work across any device uh, and be able to uh, deliver good stable content to users. And then innovating, so I think old media and the new tech firms have an opportunity to create a streaming app that doesn't look like what we have now. Every streaming app right now <laughs> looks exactly the same. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of innovation that the new tech companies can come up with, um, but also the studios. And having things like com you know, coming in as a product manager and thinking about um, having things to follow up next, you know, talking about those personalization recommendation, but getting users a little outside of their box is something that you know, we should be thinking about. And then, of course, there's challenges. So I think from the production side, a lot of the newer tech um, executives haven't been assistants, they've not been PAs. Uh, and so there's kind of a lack of knowledge about the value that they want to deliver, especially to those bottom, below the line folks. Uh, so building products that kind of streamline and make efficient, uh, those, those elements are going to be harder for them. 
Uh, and then cultivating brand, trust, and voice. Uh, so as a product manager, you're partnering with the content teams to do that. And like we talked about before, I think the studios are, they have best in class content teams uh, and working with them is awesome. Uh, and then I think the new tech um, can do more to build up those content teams. Um, so take FX, for example, every thing is iconic, every show is a brand, um, and so they try really hard to, to make those, and we work very closely with the content folks um, on different thumbnails and descriptions to make sure everything is perfect. Uh, and you can, you know, I don't watch every single Netflix show, um, but I do watch every HBO show or every FX show because they have that kind of brand trust that they've built with their product. So even if I don't like the pilot as it ends, I am willing to try it. And then taking risks. So I think as product managers, you know, we always talk about data and optimization, and I think that that's really important. Uh, it is good to be conscious of those things. Um, but I think that you can actually go too far, and you can't optimize storytelling. Um, so being able to work with the creative folks and the content folks as a product manager in these media companies and understand that you're doing a little more, you're pushing your user a little more, uh, and you need to add those into the algorithms and, and kind of what your data looking at. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you.